my wife and I were getting a bite to eat and um, the lady came up, the waitress, I know her, and she said, talk, start talking about her allergies. My allergies and my this and my... I finally stopped and said, why don't you own them? Why don't you give them away? Stop the poor lady right in her steps. She says, what do you mean by that? You don't have to take ownership of it. See, sometimes we can talk so much about what's going on that we lose track of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Say glory to God. Well, that was great worship team. Worry about time. We're not going to keep you too long. But the Lord uh, spoke to me um, late last night. Um, I read a book years ago by Max Licato. I mean, Max Licato, wonderful, wonderful man. Uh, But he said something in one of his books. He gave an acronym to Philippians chapter four, if you want to turn there, and verse four, six, and seven, four, five, six, and seven. So I, I want you to hear this because acronyms are good. Fair enough? Listen closely. He gives this acronym, C-A-L-M, an acronym for CALM, out of four, six, and, and we'll read some more in a minute. Here's what it says in Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Hello? Rejoice in the Lord always. That's the C in CALM. Celebrate God's goodness to you. Celebrate God's goodness to you. Amen. Glory to God. Here's the next one. A means ask God for help. Boy, say that one. God, ask God for help. I still hear some people say this sometimes. Well, I don't want to bother him. He's too busy. No, he's not. He's not too busy at all ever to meet your needs right where you are. Amen. So we got a C for celebrate. We got an A for ask. Here's another one. The L. What's the L mean? Leave your concerns with him. Leave your concerns with him. Sometimes we drag it around like a, a Peanuts cartoon with the little young guy with the blanket dragging around, making a dust storm all around. Leave it to him. Say, leave it to him. That means he can handle it for you. How many of you ever failed and skinned your knees and fell over trying to handle it? Wow. Well, this message today may be for you. Ready? With thanksgiving. Leave it to him with thanksgiving. What does that mean? That means thank him before you see results because the results don't belong to you because if it does, then we'd be patting ourselves in the back. Well, look what I've done. It's all about God and us. It's not about us. Listen to the last one now. We got the, we got the C, we got the A, we got the L. Listen, the M stands for meditate. Meditate on good things, if you don't mind. Think about the things that are good and worthy of praise. Can you think of some things that are worthy of praise in your life? If you woke up this morning and you're breathing, that is something you and I can thank God for. So look at every situation with calm. Don't look at it with panic. Don't call a sickness or disease on your body, yours. Because if you do that, God can interfere because you have a will and I have a will. I'm here to tell you, if you have pain somewhere, you have issues in your family, you have financial issues, talk to the one who knows everything, is in charge of everything, and he already has an answer. Wait to come out of the oven for you. Fair enough? Let's go over to Matthew chapter 6 before I go on. 6.33, and I got several translations. We all know this portion of Scripture. But this is Jesus talking. And nothing's changed because he's still talking today. Listen, in Revelation, we talked last week that Jesus is called the Word of God. Say it's the Word of God. If Jesus is the Word and the Word is Jesus, guess what? Every answer we'll need is right here in the book called the Bible. Amen. So listen to this. Seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What's going to be added unto you? All the other things. Some things we worry so much about and talk so much about, we might as well get a shovel and bury ourselves and have somebody throw the dirt on top. Remember years ago, somebody gave the illustration where a man had a donkey And the donkey just wouldn't do what he was supposed to do. Dug a huge pit and put the donkey in there. He couldn't take the noise. He couldn't take it anymore. And he kept throwing dirt on top of this donkey. Kept throwing dirt. He could still hear. He said, my, I must have dug a deep hole. He kept going until he finally realized the last shovel of dirt he had, he threw on and he still heard the noise. And when he turned around, the donkey was standing on top. Because all he did was use every shovel full and kept pushing it down so he was on top. Amen? Not buried, but on top. You and I don't have to be buried. We can be on top of anything and everything.
that we need to in life. Fair enough? Can I read you some translations in Matthew 6, 33, and then we'll get over to uh, Philippians again for a few moments. Set your heart on the God movement and its kind of life. All these things will come as a matter of course. My favorite one. You are to give first priority. First priority. Say the way, first priority. To the spirit dimension. What does that mean? So many times, all of us do this from time to time. We wind up in the realm of the flesh. We wind up trying to figure it all out, reasoning it all out. But if we would not and give to the dimension of the Holy Ghost, who knows everything, who has already laid out a path before you. Say, he's already got the thing done for me. All I got to do is get on it. Fair enough. Listen closely. And to setting all of your relationships right. When you get a proper perspective, those other things will take care of themselves. What will they do? They'll take care of themselves. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's got me covered. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to be fine. Philip's translation says this. Set your heart on his kingdom and his goodness. And all these things will come to you as a matter of, of course. Listen to this translation. Barclay, I like this one. Make the kingdom of God and life in loyalty to him and the object of all your endeavor. And you will get all the other things. You see, we spend so much time, literally so much time striving to get something when he's already got it done for us. Say he's able. He's able. See, he was able to part the Red Sea. Yes. How? When you look at the circumstances, I don't think there was a way out in the natural, but God always has a way out. Remember the ax head that went into the water? What did it, what did it happen? Did it flow to the surface? Yes. Well, that can't happen. Well, it already did. Can a woman called a virgin have a baby without a man in a relationship? No, but with God, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships. It's always already done, but we've got to open up the box and put it in the oven. And what is it, 350? Well, maybe I'll leave it at 320. Or I'll, no, follow the directions. Say, follow the directions. My mom used to bake all the time. I mean, literally all the time. We'd have a big, big pail of pasta or big pail of, oh my God, I can still see this stuff. The dough. My father was great at making dough because he worked in a bakery. They used to call him Eat Him Up Tony. He would literally take a 24 cut pizza and eat the whole thing. No, literally. How do you think I learned it? I don't know. Remember Pastor Wendell when he was with us? First thing I did was drove him down to Vita Ridge Pizza and connected with the van. Excuse me, I signed it out put a 24 cut pizza between us and we both ate it. He said, should we be doing the ministry? I said, this is the ministry. <laughs> he always had a big smile on that. Amen. He liked that 24 cut pizza. Yeah, right. Listen now, listen to what this says in Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say rejoice. What does rejoice mean? Be glad. Spin around. Say it's already done. Listen to this. Philip's translation, I like this. Delight yourselves in the Lord, yes. Find your joy in him at all times. Some people will find it in a liquor bottle. Some people will find it smoking their pot. Listen to me. The joy is found in knowing Jesus and having a right relationship. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you. That's what the word says. Amen? So what are we supposed to do? Rejoice how often? Always. Be full of joy always because you belong to the Lord. Wow. Be full of joy always because you belong to who? The Lord. If you and I think too much about something going on in our lives, it'll be like the donkey who got buried. But you can step on all those things and come out on top, not beneath it. Amen? Amen. The world we live in is not short of perilous times. The, sh the, the, the place we live at in life right now, there's enough things going wrong around us, in us, and we need help. The help will not be found in the politicians, in the government, it'll only be found in Christ Jesus and the word of God. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's able. This is the Barclay translation. Never lose your Christian joy. Let me say it again. Never lose it. Turn that into your neighbor and say, uh, he's able. And I'm never going to lose it. He's already done it. <laughs> say it's already done. Already done. See, what God wants to do is give you and I rest by knowing He's already taken care of it for. Amen. I'm going to give you a definition if I can of the word rest. Fair enough? You may want to write this down somewhere. Rest. Here's what it means down in the Greek language. Freedom from anything that tires, troubles, or disturbs you. 
Any, any shortage of that anywhere? No, if you allow it to. Say this with me, freedom from anything that tires you, that troubles you, or disturbs you. There's no shortage of that. But we're not going to let that into our life. Amen? Glory to God. We had to have some work done in the house. I, they ran a hose in the house, and I got a sheet and covered the front door up so nothing could get in. So last night, we're getting ready to go to bed, and what happened? The one mosquito that was on the planet found my house. I don't know about you, but if, if a mosquito gets in my house, every light in the house will go on. That mosquito will not get me dirty. Ever, who does that? Anybody? Nobody's like me? Oh, there's no. Oh. I don't like mosquitoes in my house. How about a spider crawling on your nose during the middle of the night? Hello, say no. So what would you do? Do something about it. Say do something about it. When there's troubles coming your way and my way, do something about it. How are we going to do it? By saying what the word says. Speak it out of our mouth. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So anytime you come to my house, there'll never be a mosquito there uh, to bite you. Ooh, listen to me now. Here's another definition of rest. To be free from care, worry, and anxiety. See, uh, understand this. When we say about uh, you need a good night's sleep, but along with having a good night's sleep is having rest. You can have a good night's sleep and still not rest. You can rest and still not have a good night's sleep. The two go hand in hand and they're linked together. Fair enough? There's nothing that the word of God doesn't cover and that Jesus himself doesn't want you to know. He loves you. I think my wife was talking about that. He loves you, he loves you, and he loves you. He's more than able and capable of getting it done for you and I. Amen? Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. Here's another one. To have peace. The Bible talks about having peace that will pass all understanding. Done enough funerals in my life for family and for others. And I'll tell you what. When people know Jesus Christ, the term the Lord gave me was, he'll Teflon you. It's like everything slides off of you. Amen. There's a peace that you just can't understand. You've never experienced it before. God wants you to know he's got his arms around you. He loves you. And he will Teflon you and I from the difficulties of this life. If we put him first, say, seek, seek first the kingdom of God. Here's another one now. This is the tough one. To rely, trust, or depend on someone. Hold on, let me give that if you can listen. To rely, trust, and depend on someone. Well, who's the one we should do that with? It's got to be Jesus Christ. He's not a man that he should lie. Has he not said what? Will he not what? Do. All right. So listen to Philippians 4, 6 now. I'm trying to couple these three verses together. Be careful for nothing, which means be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer. So what should we be doing? Praying. Praying. Where's the answer found? Remember I preached about this once. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his saints. He doesn't inhabit the prayers. Interesting. Because the Bible says he knows before we pray. He, he already knew that. But what he's looking for is our praise. If he lives in our praises, guess what Philippians is saying here? We're going to praise him and in that we'll find Jesus and we'll find the peace and rest that we need at every corner and every turn. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Listen now. Some translations of this. Don't fret over anything. I'm not going to give you the who, who did it. Don't worry about anything. Another one. Do not worry. Let no care or trouble bother you. Don't worry about anything. Have no anxiety about anything. Stop worrying about even one thing. He's got you covered. Say, he's got me covered. Say it again. He's got me covered. Glory to God. Amen. Here's another one for you. I want to saturate you today. Don't worry about anything, but talk to your father about everything. Can I give that to you again? Don't worry about anything, but talk to your father about everything. Who's your father? Your heavenly father cares about you. Uh, many times people think, well, Jesus uh, spent every day and every night praying. No, he didn't. Only a couple times we prayed all night. Most of the time he had conversation like you and I are having. He talked to God. Say that with me. Talk to God. Say it again. Talk to God. Say he's able. When you talk to him, you'll release the presence of God. You'll release the anointing for that certain situation. 
If we try to solve the problems that come our way, it'll take us out. I literally burned out once. You know why? Trying to solve problems running a church all by myself. Not on my, with of course, staff and my wife and everything. But I was trying to handle everything without going to him first. Say, seek first the kingdom of God. And what's the kingdom of God according to Romans? Righteousness. What's righteousness? Say, right standing with God. How many of you have right standing with God? We had some young people here on Wednesday night, and a young man came up. He had his hat on, and he took his hat off. You can leave your hat on, son. doesn't matter. And I found out through an interpreter that in the church that he was going to or was still going to, nobody could come to the altar. And you can't leave your hat on. I said, this altar's open. You can come anytime you want. That's the religion will do that to you. It'll bury you. I keep your hat on, son. I love you just like that. He smiled at me. And then he said this. There was three young men around. You were there. And, and he started talking. He said, he wants to get saved through the interpreter. So we led him to the Lord. So I asked him where he worked. He told me. So the Holy Ghost spoke. Well, how much do you make a day? I want to help you out there. And he goes, I don't know. Okay. Then all of a sudden, I had, I think it was three ushers, right? Three ushers standing around me, listening to the conversation. All of them reached into their pockets. I didn't ask for that. It's interesting, on Thursday morning, we're speaking about generosity. <laughs> all three of them gave me money. All these hands came three. Wow, powerful, say powerful. So I started counting, and I couldn't count it anymore. It was over $500. $500. <laughs> The young man walks away, and he, I said, do you have a Bible? No. So I looked at Nikki. Hang on, Nikki. You ready? This is for you now. I looked at Nikki, and I said, do we have any Spanish Bibles? She said, yes. Would you mind getting me one? No. Nikki did not come back with one Bible. Came back with two. That's what a woman of faith does. Because if one person got saved, somebody else is going to get saved. And here goes the apple seed in the ground. Here comes the orchards. They're showing up. That, th those young people are bringing more young people. Let me try that again. They're bringing more young people because they're hungry. Not for religion, but for relationships. Say relationship. Hallelujah. Okay, let me, let me fire real quick. Some of us have missed the opportunity to bless somebody. I'm not taking an offering. We've missed the opportunity because we start reasoning in our heads. I only got this and this. I got to buy some gas. I got Stop it. God's bigger than your paycheck. God's bigger than your wallet or your purse. God is bigger than your needs. I want to help you. I want to step you up a notch. When God speaks to you to let go of something, let go. If you don't let go, there can never be an orchard. God has your life already in his hands. He's wanting to bless you. And, let me try that. And bless you. And bless you. I've been talking about this on Thursdays and Wednesdays. I'll talk to you right now. Don't say things like, all I have is you talk about, I got a little money in the savings account, got a little in the checking account my social security, and my little pension check. Do you think God is not bigger than that thing? Don't talk like that. Words are powerful. They're powerful. Release the flow of the presence of God and the anointing to ride over your finances. I'd hold them up to God like this. Guess what? And I'd start talking to your finances. When we write a tie check out, my wife and I both lay hands on it. God's bigger than all of that. Amen? So don't make it so small that you don't think God can do this. How I many of you saw the moon the other night? God did it. How I many of you saw the sun yesterday? God did it. Do you think he has a problem handling your life and your finances and your relationship? No. Do not shrink God down to our level. Stop it. Don't do it. God wants you to explode and his presence to explode in your life uh, to a measure you've never seen before. 
I like this one. Let no anxious frets get you. Don't worry about anything, but talk to the Father about everything. What's that now? Talk to him about what? Everything. Tell him what you need and keep on thinking and saying it with our mouth. Say, the Lord is able, capable to do what? Meet all of your needs according to what? Say, his riches in glory. Now listen, I've shared this with you before, but it came into my spirit, so I wrote it down. The enemy's looking for those who are weak in faith. Say, weak in faith. He's looking for people who are weak in faith. What does that mean? They're weak in faith. Can you tell somebody that they're weak in faith? You can see it. You can see it. Say, I can see it. Here's another part of it. Who are weak in faith, they're ignorant of the word of God. That's who the enemy is looking for to take a, a shot at your life and my life. First of all, what? Uh, 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 looking for those who are weak in faith. Have you ever spotted somebody who's weak in faith? You can't be weak in faith and live on planet earth and make it. Can't do it. Here's another one now. Ignorant of the word. So many people are ignorant of the word. They know John 3.16 because somebody holds a sign up at the football game. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more because when Jesus said, uh, you, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We have to eat the word for our spiritual man to grow. You understand that? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's another one now. Listen closely. Wow. People isolate themselves. The enemy loves to isolate people. He loves to isolate people. Because when they're isolated, their mind starts running. They start thinking about this and that. Maybe I should do that. You need to have a relationship with God that you feed every single day. Say every single day. Say God's waiting for me. He was in the cool of the garden to talk to Adam and Eve. Am I right? He wants that kind of a relationship. All right, let me give you a couple more. Fair enough. One more here. Isolate unto themselves and not mature enough to stand in the face of the hassling, hassling, hassling words of the enemy. Where? Go like this. So can I give them back to you again? Here we go now. Those looking that have weak faith. Say weak faith. What's the next one? Ignorant of the word of God. Say ignorant of the word of God. There are people sitting in church that are ignorant of the word of God. Say not me. All right. Here's another one. They isolate themselves. This is huge in the kingdom of God. You and I cannot isolate ourselves from the word of God. It's got to be first on our plate. First on our plate. Say this again. First. Here we go now. One more. He likes to. Oh my God. He likes to look for those not mature enough and give us a hassle. The enemy tries to hassle me, you know where? Right here in my head. You, pastor? Yeah, I live on planet Earth and I breathe air like you. And he's looking for me, waiting for me to make a mistake with my mouth. But I don't give him the opportunity. Why? Because I know my mouth filled with the word of God will cause him to run scared. Say run scared. Say run scared. All right, I got five minutes left. Fair enough. Here's something about the word of God. This will help us when anxiety tries to show up. The Bible must be the governor, the law, and the ruler, and the final say-so in our life. It's the Bible, and that's it. Say, that's it. It's the Bible, and that's it. The enemy wants to take you out. He wanted to take Jesus out. He's wanted to take me out. He wanted to take my wife out. He cannot and he will not do it. Because we have to stand up and say what the word says. And if you'll do the same thing, you'll be victorious every single time. Say this with me and we're going to go home. I will no longer be a target. I'm no longer a target. I am not weak in faith. I'm not ignorant of the word of God. I'm strong. He's able to do whatever I need in me.